So I love perfumes. I'm obsessed with perfumes. And I decided that I wanna find a couple new signature scents. And I've always had difficulty finding new signature scents because I can't just spritz something in the store and make a decision there. Like I have to wear it throughout the day, I have to see how it wears on me, I have to see how I feel, I have to see how excited I am to use it. And I decided that I am gonna go on a quest to find my signature scent. And I have the help of the YouTube perfume company. They didn't know they were helping me but they are. And so in this video, I'm gonna share with you my journey to finding my signature scent where I tried 26 different perfumes in 26 days. Each day had its own perfume. I wore that perfume throughout the day. And at the end of the day, I made a decision on, is this something I like? And is this something I don't? And out of the 26, there were five perfumes that I liked. The rest of them were just okay. So keep watching to see what perfumes made the cut. So if you're a fan of perfumes, you might have gone down the perfume YouTube rabbit hole. And it was really fun to discover a lot of these new creators that I have grown to really, really like. Some of them include Jeremy Fragrance, Demi Rawling, Erin Nicole TV, Mila LeBlanc, and Karina Waldron. I was watching a lot of these videos and I would hear their description of the perfumes and I was like, oh my God, I wish I could smell that right now. But you know, when you're at home, you just can't. You don't have, uh, you know, 500 different perfumes at your disposal like Jeremy Fragrance does. And so I started writing down perfumes that seemed appealing to me, that a lot of these perfume YouTubers seem to talk about me. There's a few perfumes that people talk about again and again and again. And so what I did is I ended up buying a whole bunch of samples online. I joined Scentbird. I bought some perfume sets from Sephora and that's how I got together all of these samples. So here we go, let's get started. Day one did not start out too good. It was Valentino, Pink Valentino. And I did not like this perfume at all. At all. Like, I think this was my least favorite perfume of the entire 26 days. To me, it was way too sweet. I don't like those sweet, syrupy type of perfumes. And it was so synthetic. Not to say that I don't like synthetic smells, because I think I do sometimes, but this one I just didn't. I also use the website Fragrant, Fragrantica, Fragrantica, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I use that to give me some insight into the notes in these perfumes. I also, from Semper, they give you this pretty little card. So for those perfumes, I'll, I'll be using that to reference. According to Fragrantica, uh, this perfume, is fruity, sweet, rose, floral, musky, amber. It was a strong perfume. I could still smell it six hours later and I really didn't want to smell it. So that was a fail. Day number two is Ariana Grande Cloud. So Ariana Grande, Grande Cloud actually is really pretty on the open. I really, really like, and these are kind of what some of the samples look like. It's really strong at first, but it actually fades really quickly. And for me to like a perfume, it has to last, it has to last all day. And I also, it needs to smell good to me at the beginning. So I did really like the way this one smelled right away, but then when it dried down, I wasn't crazy about the scent actually. So this is a floral fruity gourmand fragrance for women. Top notes are lavender, pear, and bergamot, which I usually like those. Little notes are whipped cream, praline, um, vanilla, I think, coconut possibly. And so it definitely has that gourmand type of a scent to it, which I sometimes like those, but in this case, I didn't, I didn't love it. My main gripe with this one is that it just didn't last. It didn't last at all. So day three is an Hermes perfume and it's this adorable little sample. I got a beautiful little sample set of these. So you're gonna see more Hermes perfumes in this video. But this one is a Sir Le Nil, and I know I'm mispronouncing it. This is a really light citrusy scent. It's really beautiful, but same thing as the Ariana Grande one. It didn't last on me that long at all. So it's it's very fresh uh, and floral, and almost a little bit green or grass in it. And you know, it's what Un Hardin, which is a garden, totally fits that description. Very almost citrusy. So it is a beautiful scent, but I didn't like the fact that it didn't last. So the top notes of this one are grapefruit carrot, mango, I believe, and tomato. And the middle notes are lotus, orange, peony. Those are some of the notes in there. So it's floral, it's fruit, it's very beautiful, but it just, it just didn't last on me. And because of that, mm, it's a fail. So the next one is Perfume de Marley Casilli. Oh yeah, oh, this is one I did not like. Oh, I didn't like, oh, this like, 
I heard so many good things about this perfume and it just seems cheap, like one of those cheap Victoria's Secret or Bath and Body Works, like fruity scented uh, bath things. You know what I'm talking about. It's not good to me. It was not good, ooh, not good at all. But one thing that I did notice about the scent is that on the open, I really disliked it, but it did dry down to something a lot nicer, not as strong and fruity. But for me to love a perfume, I have to like it in the open because I get a lot of joy from spritzing the perfume and you know, part of my getting ready process. But this is an amber floral uh, fragrance for women. The top notes are red currant, which I think that's something I, I don't like. And uh, Bulgarian rose. Middle notes are plum, mimosa. So, you know, fruity, floral, but not my jam. The next one is Montal Roses Musk, which I have the little card right here. I love the little cards that Semperd, Semperd sends. And no, this isn't sponsored. I pay for it all by myself. But if they want to sponsor me, I mean, I'm not opposed. So this card says Roses Musk, which you could probably imagine is about, you know, it's a very rose scent. And sometimes I like rose scents. Roses Musk elevates the timeless floor appeal of rose and jasmine with its elegant beam of bright, fizzy musk. I mean, that sounds amazing, right? Redefining their innate sensuality with a minimum of exquisitely blended notes. So only three, musk, rose, and jasmine. So when I heard this description, I was like, ooh, I like musk, I like rose, I like jasmine. So I gotta like this. and. And I do like it, but it is very, very heavy on the rose. And I, I do like it in the open, but for me, it's not gonna be a signature scent. I could just see getting sick of it. And it really, to me, just smells like straight up rose. Like it just smells like rose. And rose is really nice. I mean, it literally smells as if I'm smelling a rose. And my mom has a rose garden. I do enjoy going back there and smelling the roses, but I don't know if I wanna smell like roses all day, every day. And for a signature scent, I need to not get sick of it. I need to be able to love it and be like, have that, joy every single time I spray it. And the next one is Perfumes de Marley de Lina. So here's another Perfumes de Marley. And this one, yeah, this is another one I wasn't crazy about. I like it better than the other Perfumes de Marley one. That one, ugh. But this one is very fruity, citrusy, fresh. And, and, and keep in mind, I wore all these for a full day. So this isn't just my first impression. This is after, you know, kind of remembering like, oh yeah, I remember not liking this. And I have some notes there too I'm referring to in case I forget, there's a lot of perfumes. To me, this seems kind of like a cheap perfume. It just doesn't seem like an elegant formula. Same thing, it seems like something you pick up at Victoria's Secret. I mean, no hate on Victoria's Secret. I mean, some of those angel, angel perfumes actually smell really, really nice. But just like a not super elegant one, which, you know, it's just a nice brand. So it, it, I wasn't a fan of it. This is a floral fragrance for women. Top notes are lychee, rhubarb. The more that I tested all these perfumes and kind of learning about what notes are in there, I'm finding that I don't like lychee, rhubarb, those types of notes. It has bergamot and nutmeg. Middle notes are Turkish rose, peony musk, vanilla, and the base notes are cedar, vetiver, and incense. So it is a strong scent. It does linger, but if you don't aren't crazy about the scent, then, then I guess that's, that's not really a good thing. So this was also a fail for me. Okay, now this next perfume is actually the first of the one of five that I actually really liked. And this one is Paco Rabanne Olympia. I really liked this perfume. Hmm, it actually reminds me of another, ooh. Mm. This reminds me of another perfume that I love, which is Alien. I love Alien. I've been wearing Alien since forever, forever. More, more than 10 years. I love Alien. I only wear it at night. So this really reminds me of that. This is a very sexy nighttime scent. Um, it's like something you would wear to a club or a date night. Well, it's a very loud scent and I like those kind of perfumes. This is like a perfume perfume. When I spray this, I'm like, all right, now this is a perfume. So this is an amber floral fragrance for women. The top notes are water jasmine, green mandarin, and ginger flower. Middle notes are salt and vanilla, which is interesting. And base notes are cashmere wood and sandalwood. So I really, really love this. This is of the top five for me. It probably wouldn't become a signature scent for me because it's so similar to Alien that is a signature scent for me, but I might one day, you know, buy it. It's on my list of, of perfumes that I like. Now the next one is also one of my top five. And my whole goal with this is actually to 
fine, and I don't know, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, is to find a signature scent specifically more for summer. Uh, for summer and spring, I know we're, you're, we're deep into summer, but really a more summertime scent. So that was kind of my goal, goal for this. And this next one really seems like a summer, spring type of perfume, and it is part of my top five. And this one is Creed Aventus for her. Hmm. Mmm, oh, I love this. Oh, this is so, 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 so nice. Oh, yeah. Mmm. This is really fresh to me, really beautiful. This does seem to me like an expensive perfume. Like you're going to a garden party with other people that are wearing hats and, you know, shirts like this. And you're just enjoying life, going out again, living life again. You know, we're all trying to do that and it's, it's really it has a strong citrus scent and i like citrus it just reminds me of sunshine I, I just i love this perfume so this is a fruity floral perfume which to me leans more in the floral than fruity it begins with top notes of patchouli green apple bergamot lemon and pink pepper and in the middle notes are sandalwood rose and musk and in the base are peach black currant, lilac. So it's a really beautiful, I mean, there's more, more notes than that, but it's a really beautiful scent and this is definitely gonna be one I'm considering for my signature scent. The next one is one that I heard from so many different YouTubers and it was Guerlain Mon Guerlain. So, oh, <laughs> oh too much. I like this one. This is more of a, a darker nighttime woodsy kind of scent. And this isn't in my top five, but this is one that I did enjoy. I wouldn't say it's a, comp it's, it's a fail. It's one that if I had to wear it, I would, and I would be okay with it. I wouldn't hate myself. But to me, this smells like a super fancy soap, like a super fancy soap that you find in like a super fancy store. <laughs> It's very feminine to me. It's a very nice scent. So this is an amber woody fragrance for women. The top notes are lavender and bergamot. Middle notes are iris, jasmine, and rose. Base notes are Tahitian vanilla and sandalwood, and I know a few others. So this is this is a beautiful this is a beautiful perfume. Not my absolute favorite, but it is nice. Here's another one from Semper. So I have a little card here, and this is Montal Solil de Capri. This one to me seemed like a really like a really summer scent, the way the description is. It says here, an invigorating harmony of citrus fruit from Italy, grapefruit and kumquat built around a heart of white flowers over a base of white musk and Mediterranean spices. I think it would be so fun to be the person to write this stuff. I just love the way to describe it. So the main notes in this one are kumquat, grapefruit, white flowers, spices, and musk, which, and here in the description online, I was like, oh, this, this could seem really nice and fresh. I know I like grapefruit. Um, I like white flowers. I like musk. But to me, it was a little bit of a disappointment. It was just kind of like, I don't know. It didn't really seem summery to me. And it almost seemed like a little bit stale, like stale fruit. I just wasn't crazy about this one. And I can't really put my finger on it. He said, I just didn't, I didn't love it. I was expecting it to be a little bit more Yes, I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. This is another Hermes perfume, and I cannot pronounce it. It is, I'm reading it here, Eau de Rhubarb or Clatclate Hermes, but it's this one in the red bottle. This is also very, very light, very citrusy, very fruity, very summery. This is a pretty scent. This is very pretty. There are a couple of the Hermes ones though that I loved and they're coming up, but this one is pretty. It's very, very grapefruit to me, like straight grapefruit right away and very citrusy, but it, this one wore really nice throughout the day. Um, it wasn't a very strong perfume like the other Hermes ones, so that's always a disappointment for me. It's really, really fresh. It is a beautiful, definitely summer daytime scent. This is a, actually a unisex fragrance for men and women. Top note is rhubarb, middle notes is red berries, and the base note is white musk. Not, not, a, not a fail, not a love, but definitely a like. This perfume uh, was actually recommended to me by a friend to try out on Scentbird, and it was a Christian Siriano Intimate Silhouette. So this one is a very gourmand scent, and I'm not the biggest fan of the gourmand scents. I don't like scents that smell like, like chocolate and 
synthetic desserts. I don't, I, I'm not a huge fan of it. I think every now and then it's like, I don't want to say absolutes because sometimes there is a scent that perfume that's a little bit more gourmand and it's okay, but this one wasn't. This is one that I did not like at all. And the description here says, and in the way they have these descriptions, you're like, oh, I have to smell that right now, but it's a seductive, powerful, feminine fragrance. The introduction of the fragrance is comprised of delicate jasmine petals that contrast the daring feel of the black sesame. Hints of powerful amberwood create a lasting resonance for an olfactive effect that resembles the impact of Christ Christian's designs in the world of fashion. Notes of creamy sandalwood, cashmere musk, and Madagascar vanilla all portray the femininity of the fragrance. Who wrote this? I, I love this. I love the way they write these things. So in here, you've got jasmine petals, black sesame seeds, the amberwood, the Madagascar vanilla, and the cashmere musk. To me, it was it was too synthetic, Garmani. I, I could my 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 friend. She loves it. She says it's one that she absolutely loves. But it just smells like a dessert to me. I'm not I'm not the biggest fan. So here's another one from Sempered, and this is the Narcisco Rodriguez for her. And same thing though, a lot, all these scents are were most likely either recommended by people or from people talking about them on YouTube. So I heard a lot of people mention this one, Narciso Rodriguez for her. Now the description for this one is Must Daring Mystery is center stage in this dramatic eau de parfum. Top notes of sheer rose and light peach add tropical and floral intrigue of a rich, sensual patchouli and sweet sandalwood. Oh, so it's rose peach, patchouli, and sandalwood. Yeah, this one, you know, I I like this one, but I don't love it. It's very like old lady perfume. And actually a lot of times I do like old lady perfumes. And this is definitely an old lady perfume, but it wasn't one that I loved. It reminds me of something that somebody from like the Real Housewives of New York City would wear. Like someone rich, someone with a lot of time on their hands to go to lunch or go to the Hamptons and they're spritzing this perfume that just smells rich old lady in New York. So. That's what that scent reminds me of. It's a nice scent, but it's not something I absolutely love. So the next one is Roja Perfumes Elixir. And this is a warm, sweet, and sensual blend with a lively bouquet of creamy jasmine, sweet May Rose, and fresh Lily of the Valley nestling, nestling on a warm and sensual bed of candle, sandalwood, cinnamon, and cashmere wood. So this is jasmine, raspberry, rose, peach, and vanilla. This is another one that I did like and enjoy. It wasn't in my top five, but it was, it was one that I liked. I liked this one. It was like, okay, this is nice. Like, I don't hate it. I think it's really pretty. It's not one, for me, when it comes to scents, I usually right away, I'm like, ooh, I love that. Ooh, I wanna smell more of it. Like, I literally wanna continue spritzing it throughout the day. This is one that I liked. I enjoyed it. It was It's pleasant. Uh, I could wear it and be happy. It's very sophisticated. It's very feminine. I, I do like it. I really do. It didn't make it in my top five, but it was definitely maybe number six or number seven. It was definitely up there, and this was very, very, very much a very beautiful perfume. Here's another one, and this is Dolce & Gabbana The One. An opulent elixir of peach, mandarin, bergamot, and lychee infuses weightless white florals with a sensual, tropical feel, accented with rich toasted vanilla in the base. So this one is vanilla, peach, lily, lychee, and musk. So in smelling this one, oh yeah, this was one I did not like. I did not like this one. This one was like, oh. This is not one I liked, and so many people love this one. And yeah, I didn't like it. Almost to me, like seemed like something was rotten. But it seems like it would be like a beautifully elegant upscale perfume that went sour, went bad. Like I can, I feel like I get what they're go doing with this, but it just, the end result just, just didn't work. At least not for me. So the next one is a Tom Ford Neroli Portofino. This is one I think I got from a Sephora little sample set. And this is a scent that I really, really liked. But the problem with this scent is it didn't last long at all. Oh, this one smells so good. Like this one does smell beautiful. I love the way this smells. This, this reminds me of like a European vacation somewhere. What is this? Portofino. Portofino. Oh, I mean, I guess that's the name of it. But it really does remind me of like being in Europe and just having a glass of wine overlooking the ocean at three o'clock when you should really be working and doing something productive, but you're not because you're in Europe, in Portofino, and it's incredible there. And it's beautiful, but the scent does not last. And this is my question to you. 
Okay, this is like a little scent thing, whatever. Are these made to not last? Like, are these the actual perfumes that you buy? Um, because this one did not last. And I did look online just for reviews too, and a lot of people said this one didn't last. Like, like I can't even smell it anymore. But like, when I go like this, like, oh. It smells so good, it smells so good. I'm trying to find a dupe for this, something similar for this, because this did not last, and I love the scent of it. So, I loved it, but it's not in my top five because it just doesn't last, and I can't deal with scents that don't last. All right, this next perfume could be my number one. It could be, it could be the signature scent. I love this, I love this, definitely a top five, definitely a contender for my signature scent. I can literally wear this all day long. I use up a lot of the sample. Oh my God, it smells so good. And you know, I didn't hear too many YouTubers talk about it. This one is part, this is part of this Hermes perfume box set, which just for the box alone is like kind of bougie, right? And these little bottles are so adorable. I mean, they're so cute. They're part of this group, not because I heard YouTubers talk about it. Almost everything else is from YouTubers and like their recommendations, but I had this Hermes set, so I wanted to try it. And I think I only heard one YouTuber, Karina Waldron, she mentioned this in one of her videos, but I mean, there's so many videos out there, so I'm sure this has been mentioned before, but it didn't seem to be one mentioned a lot. And I'm just, I love this perfume. This one is a floral fragrance for women. The top notes are ginger, bitter orange, and bergamot. And the middle notes are tuberose, orange blossom, and jasmine. The base notes are sandalwood and vanilla. So love, 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 top five. This is another one from Scentbird, and this is the Pink Sugar Creamy Sunshine. Now this is one that I picked because it just seemed to be so summery to me, right? It just, it seemed lovely. I don't know why I picked it though in retrospect because I didn't like the original Pink Sugar. It was way too artificial sweet. But I, but the description of this, I'll tell you. Creamy Sunshine was created with a touch of luminosity to enhance the top and bottom notes of the original Pink Sugar fragrance, which I, yeah, reading this, I should have known. Be transported to a cheerful paradise with notes of coconut milk, mimosa, and caramel. I mean, who doesn't want to try that? So it's coconut milk, orange, cotton candy, mm, mimosa, and caramel. Caramel to me, no. I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. You know, because you, sometimes you just want to try things and say, well, maybe in this one scenario, I love it. I didn't. It was a little bit of a fail for me. But if you do like the original pink sugar, you'll probably like this. And Next one is one that I heard from a lot of different people. This was Montal Arabian's Tonka. And this one on the opening smells a lot like coffee. You get that coffee bean in there, but then eventually the flower, the floral of it peeks through. And eventually, once it dries down, I do like the scent. But on the opening, I just wasn't crazy about it. This is a very dark, very strong, very seductive scent. Uh, it is beautiful, but it isn't my favorite. Just too, too much of that coffee smell at the beginning. This is an, a unisex fragrance. It's an amber woody fragrance for men and women. The top notes are saffron and bergamot. Middle notes are agarwood, Bulgarian rose, and the base notes are musk, uh, sugarcane, and tonka bean. So that's that's probably why it's Arabian tonka and probably why it smells like coffee. I'm assuming that's some kind of coffee bean. And yeah, nah, I love coffee too, by the way, but not, not a win for me. The next one was a win for me, and this is Chloe by Chloe. Now this one seems to me like a very expensive French soap. I, I love this one. This one reminds me of something that you would find at a restaurant in uh, on Champs-Élysées in Paris. And you're having a salad of goat cheese and a cappuccino, and you decide to go to the bathroom. You walk to the bathroom and it's decorated beautifully, and you use the soap. And Chloe by Chloe is what that soap smells like. And and I love it. I think it's beautiful, super feminine, very floral. Um, let's see what Semperd says. They say the scent begins with floral powdery note, the powder, Ooh. yeah. Powdery notes, hints of peony, lychee, and springtime freesia. The airy flirtatious head notes drift away to reveal the richer and more sensual side of the rose. The distinctive character of this unique rose is accompanied by magnolia and lily of the valley as well as subtle, just subtle, intimidation, intimidate. Intimations, intimations of warm amber and elegant cedar wood. Peony, rose, honey, magnolia, and cedar wood. And this is this is a win for me. I really, really enjoy this scent. This is a beautiful scent. I heard a lot of YouTubers talk about it, and it does, it's it's, it's a very fresh, light, 
Fancy soap scent and I like it. Next one is Narciso Rodriguez Narciss. Now this is one that when I first smelled it, I really liked it at the opening. I thought it was gonna be a top five for me, but eventually I kind of got sick of it over time. I liked that it was a strong scent. It was almost an old lady scent and I like old lady scents. This really smells like classic feminine old lady scent perfume. Uh, a little bit though after a while, it just reminds me of a cheap hotel and an old lady sitting at the shop machine smoking cigarettes, have several gin and tonics and wearing this perfume. So that's what it reminds me of. But I kind of like it in a weird way, but I don't love it. I'm kind of undecided about it, to be honest. It's a floor woody musk fragrance for women. Top notes are gardenia and white musk. And you know what? After hearing, after saying that, I, I don't like gardenia. That's one thing I've noticed. I don't like gardenia and perfume. So maybe that's why I'm not loving it. Middle notes is musk. Base notes are cedar, white cedar, and vetiver. The next one is one that I heard Jeremy Fragrance talk about a lot. He like loves this perfume. And so I was expecting this strong, powerful scent that captures a room, right? But, uh, oh, you need to know the perfume. So the perfume is, if you watch him a lot, maybe, maybe you'll guess it. It's Tresor La Nuit a la Folie by Lancome. And I actually like a lot of Lancome's perfumes. Huda Lancome is one that I love that nobody ever talks about. I don't even know if they still sell it. So this one, I was shocked at how light of a scent it was. It wasn't strong, it wasn't powerful. It was nice, it was pretty, but it wasn't a strong, scent that I he talks about, which he, he mentions time and time again how strong and powerful the scent is, and it just wasn't that for me. It was pretty, it was light, but honestly, it didn't even last on me. It didn't last at all. So that was a big disappointment. This is pretty, it does smell like vanilla to me. It didn't wow me, but it's pretty. And definitely not what I was thinking it would be. But it is an amber vanilla fragrance for women. The top notes are red currant, pear, pink pepper, and bergamot. Middle notes are damask rose, violet, peony, and jasmine. And base notes are bourbon vanilla, tonka bean, there's that tonka again, nutmeg, and a few other things I can't pronounce. So yeah, yeah, eh, a little bit of a fail for me. Pretty perfume, but not what I was expecting. So the next one is one that I wanted to try because I love Alien and I thought, you know, if I love Alien, maybe I'll like this perfume, right? And it's a Mogler perfume. I don't like Angel, but I thought I'd give this one a shot. And this one to me, oh, 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 oh no, 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 not good, not good, not good. This is RS and Swell and this was, oh, oh, no, not good, not good. But I know why I don't like it now, you know, in doing this whole experiment is that I don't like gardenia. I don't like gardenia at all. I don't like it and this smells like straight up gardenia and I don't like it. So if you like gardenia, you might like this. But they're saying this is an amber vanilla fragrance for women. Top notes are gardenia and cinnamon. Middle notes are green notes and base notes are musk. So huge fail for me, kind of gross. The next one is a fragrance I got from Sephora. It's like a little fragrance set. And this one is the Nest Sunkiss Hibiscus. This radiant solar floral eau de parfum blends warm golden amber with layers of classic white florals and frangipani of tropical flora with a creamy coconut accord. What is a radiant solar? Oh, solar flora, like a sunshine floral, maybe? Okay, this one was also one that just, it was just, Oh, underwhelming. This one is one that reminds me of, of Hawaii, which, you know, Hawaii is beautiful. I love Hawaii, but it's like one of those perfumes you buy at the ABC store when you walk in. You're super excited to be in Hawaii and you decide to purchase this random perfume from ABC store and you get all excited about it and wear it when you're there and then when you get home, you never wear it again. That's what this reminds me of, one of those ABC store perfumes. And yeah, it's just, it's just straight up Hawaii. I mean, it's pretty, but I'm not in Hawaii and I'm kind of sad that I'm not. So this next perfume is another favorite of mine. This I think rounds up my top five favorites. Also, if you're still with me at this point, thank you. Give the video a like if you like talking about perfume or hearing people talk about perfume because I can, I can talk about it forever. So thanks for sticking with me up until the bitter end of this very lengthy, probably way too long for the algorithm video. But, but I don't care because this is fun for me. <laughs> I hope it's fun for you too. Okay, this is uh, an Hermes. This is Eau de Merveille. I don't pronounce, I'm not French. I don't know how to. 
Uh, but this is a beautiful, very, very fresh scent. Top five, love it. I love it in the opening, but I love it even more as it dries down. And it lasted, I would get whiffs of this when I'm walking around, I'm like, what is that? Oh my, oh my God. So this one is a beautiful scent to me. I really like this scent. This smells expensive to me. It's expensive to be me. If you know that reference, <laughs> let me know in the comments. But it does, it smells expensive and rich and I love it. I love it. It smells like life. This is a woody fragrance for women. The top notes are orange, elemy resin, and lemon. Middle notes are amber, pepper, pink pepper, and violet. Base notes are fir, cedar, Madagascar, and vetiver. So beautiful fragrance, top five. All right, rounding up the last one, we've got a fail. This is bond number nine, Greenwich. I heard so many people talking about this one, and this is the only bond number nine fragrance I have in this group. I would love to try a whole bunch of them. This was a fail. This reminds me of like kind of a cheap, like teenager men's cologne. I can't put my finger on it, but I, I just don't, I don't like it. It just reminds me of a men's cologne, kind of a cheap men's cologne. It's kind of oddly fruity. The top notes are lychee, cassis, and mandarin orange. Middle notes are peony, water lily, and jasmine. Base notes are prairie musk vanilla. So a lot of interesting things in there. Not a fan, a big fail. So to round up this whole thing, out of all these perfumes, my top five perfumes were Twilly d'Hermes, this Eau de Marvelis Thermes, the Paco Rabanne, Olympia, Creed Aventus for her, and, and Chloe by Chloe. So those are my top five. If someone had a gun to my head and said, pick your signature scent right now, right now, right now. And I would have to say it would be the Twilly Thayer Mist. So I'm probably gonna buy a full size bottle of this when I run out. I'm gonna use this all up, see how I feel as I continue using it. I have a feeling I'm still gonna love it and then probably buy the, the full size version. 